so this is my second video. My first video was about polar alignment, and this is uh, pretty much just as important. But uh, after I've uh, attempted to rebuild my mount, I realized uh, there's some few things I'd like to say. Uh, you can probably, if you haven't seen the first video, that's fine. You can watch this one and watch the other one um, afterwards. So the thing I wanted to say that is important and uh, maybe not uh, sort of a, a uh, inconvenient truth is that the uh, adjustments on your brand new scope and your brand new mount are probably not done. So <clears throat> this is what I wanted to talk about. Um, we, I have, an, I have a secondhand mount, and it was uh, seemed to be nice, but I didn't know really how it should operate properly. So uh, I'm finding now that there were things uh, it couldn't do. It was getting the mount was getting stiff on certain positions uh, as it pointed uh, to the sky. And uh, so I'm in the process of rebuilding it. Um, I can show you a bit of a video with it taken apart. It's almost back together again. And uh, I'm waiting for parts for um, to uh, do a belt upgrade, a belt drive upgrade. So <clears throat> the thing is, the thing is, the important thing is adjustments. Um, this was okay. Uh, it, 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 I've been doing this for now two years. and. Uh, now I'm refurbishing it, and uh, I'm realizing, for one, um, the mount wasn't perhaps lubricated properly and maybe not adjusted properly. Uh, though I'm talking about the worm gears. Um, so uh, why I say that is because a friend of mine also has a brand new mount, very good mount, very nice. But we wondered why it was having a little bit of clatter, uh, like a in one of the axes, or we weren't really even sure which axis it was, but we, we heard a clatter, we weren't sure what it was. And in the process of me <clears throat> taking this thing apart and putting it back together again, I learned that the problem he had was the worm gear adjustment. So that's something that needs to be done, um, that you should check before you do anything. And one thing I guess I'll, I'll show you that right now, is if you loosen up the clutches, you should get nice, easy movement. It really should be quite easy. If I let this go, it's gonna, it's gonna, on its own weight, it's gonna fall. And if I, I can turn this, no problem. It's not stiff. And also, if I, if I try to jiggle it, there's no clatter. It, it actually responds without any play. If I do this in the other axis, there's no play. So everything is smooth. And the reason why that is, is for one thing, I re-lubricated uh, re all, all the gears and all, uh, all the bearings, actually all the bearings at this point. And uh, <clears throat> I adjusted the, the uh, worm gear. So let me show you about adjusting the worm gear. So if, if you can come over here. <laughs> so the worm gear is, this is the worm gear, you can see it. If I, ro if I turn this, you'll see it rotate the declination axis. So this is true on both axes. And what you need to do is you need to loosen up all these bolts that secure the worm gear there's three in this case and then you need to loosen up there's two set screws on opposite sides of the worm gear and they adjust it for uh, the amount of pressure that you have against the other ax uh, against the uh, worm gear on the main on the axis you're awfully close <laughs> is it focused? Mm -hmm. yeah okay so um, so how this works is you loosen up all these adjustments, you loosen up the main securing bolts and you loosen up the set screws. And then you push the worm gear towards together and then you tighten this up. And as you tighten, you get to where it's snug and then you put it about a quarter turn past that and it will pull the 
worm gear away from the other matings, the other half of the worm gear. And that will give you some play. Then you go to the other side, over here, and you tighten that up until it's snug. Um, then you can give it a quarter turn of pressure. So now you have both, both set screws kind of positioning the worm gear. So once you've done that, then you come back to the other side, here, and you start to loosen this until you no longer get any play in the axis. So you shouldn't, when you do this, you should feel no, uh, no jiggles, no, no uh, rattles. It should be just smooth and easy. And once that's like that, basically you just have to maybe do a quarter turn on this or less. And once it's like that, you 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 uh, screw in these main these main bolts, and it's fixed. And then that's your adjustment. So you do this on both axes. It's not hard to do, and you should check at least when even if you bought a brand new mount or second hand mount, you should be checking this. Everything should move nice and smooth with uh, when there's no, you know, nice and smooth, that's the way it should be. Something I forgot to mention uh, is the uh, checking the worm gear uh, adjustments. Um, you also have to check the actual turning of the worm gear uh, axis because uh, if you put too much pressure uh, if you allow the worm gear to get uh, too too close and too much pressure, then this will bind. So uh, in both axes. So check this that this is smooth as well. Um, <clears throat> I haven't I haven't adjusted mine. I haven't finished my adjustment because uh, I have to uh, put on the belt uh, the belt drive upgrade. <clears throat> okay, so that's the that's a that's a what I wanted to say on that. The other thing is, the other adjustment which uh, I've also had to do is the polar scope. So the polar scope is not going to work well, you have to, unless you align it. So this polar scope is aligned, there's three set screws here. I don't know if you can see one here. And there's three of them. I can't turn this, but you, there's three of these. And when you rotate this axis, the polar scope rotates and when you look through it you should see that the center of the crosshairs in the polar scope center of the reticle should not move relative to the horizon or whatever you're you're pointing this at so that's why you you, you adjust these three set screws there's one two three so that when you rotate and you've pointed this thing toward your polar scope towards a target um, Everything is in the same position, so it's uh, so you've centered, you've bore sighted your polar scope. So that's the second adjustment on the mount. Okay, <laughs> so now I, as a just a reminder, this of course was uh, we found this uh, adjustment on the worm gear is not not uh, in the right position on a brand new mount. So you should check this, no matter, even if your equipment's brand new. So the other uh, thing I wanted to talk about is the actual telescope. So uh, if you want to come over here and look at this. So in the actual, in the telescope, this being a refractor, but it will be true in all scopes, like you have to do a collimation. So the collimation is basically aligning the main lens uh, or lenses so that they focus down into your uh, camera perfectly you know like uh, aligned and there's no offset there's not it's not like focusing to the left or to the right and uh, so the way to do that is if you look here you'll see these screws so there's three sets of these one two and three in the bottom they, they're like a push-pull arrangement <clears throat> and when you get a brand new scope chances are these been, have been they put the this 
against the mounting, uh, the mounting uh, bosses and then just screwed it down. So that's probably how it got, that's what mine was. So you have to, you have to bring it out with these set screws to a position where you can then adjust. So you, you, you back it off a little bit and then you adjust the set screws uh, to align it. Okay, so how do you do that? You need a cat's eye alignment tool, this. Now this one was bought, it's actually for a Newtonian, but it doesn't really matter. It had crosshairs, but I cut them out because uh, for a refractor, when you look through this, the image is quite, quite small and quite not very bright, and the crosshairs were getting in the way. So I, I removed them, but it's the same thing. This goes into the eyepiece holder, and you shine a bright light into this end, not a laser, because it'll damage your eyes. You, 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 just a bright light. It, goes, it gets reflected in to the end, and comes back again. And you see two reflections, basically, one from the, uh, from the surfaces of the objective, and you want to, they look like two donuts, and you want to align them so that they line up concentrically. So that's how you do your collimation on this kind of a refractor. So for sure you're going to probably have to do that when you get a brand new scope. Now, you know, you're going to have to at least check that it's correct. And the final thing <clears throat> is, we're well, not really an adjustment, but if you're doing astrophotography, um, this is a triple, uh, triplet apochromatic, so it's got three lenses up here, so all the weight is up, actually up at the front, but, uh, but you need to, uh, even the triplet apochromatic has a very good, very high quality image, but the image back at the camera over here is not exactly flat, it's like at the edges you'll get, um, uh, kind of distortion, like radial distortion. So you have, you need to buy, if you want to do astrophotography, you need to buy this device here. This is, this piece that's in, plugged into the end here is a flattener and it flattens the field so that your image recorded on your camera is, uh, gives you round stars from left to right. I mean, sorry, sorry, from, uh, from the middle and at the edges of your uh, frame. So you need a flattener. So that's kind of an adjustment. The thing you have to worry about is typically there's a 55 millimeter uh, measurement from this flange, mating flange, to the back of the camera uh, that you have to keep. Uh, and so that adjustment needs to be made. And uh, let me show you with the camera actually attached. and. Just hold on and I'll come back with the camera. Okay. Okay. All right, so we have the camera. And if you see in the camera, there's a little marker and that shows the focal plane of the, that shows where the uh, sensor is. So when you mate this to your flattener, The dimension is from the, that flange at the flattener, this flange right along here, to here is 55 millimeters. I won't measure it right here now, but that's what you, you want to keep that distance from the flange mating to this fit is 55 millimeters. So that's the, other, that's the other adjustment that needs to be made. And, but, but pretty typically that's, that's what you get uh, without having to do anything like shimming, or anything like that. Um, if, uh, if your camera is, has, has a different measurement here, then you may have to get shims or a different kind of flattener. I just wanted to make a correction here. Um, I was pointing to the flange being uh, the mating point of the camera and the, this point here, which is the, the adapter. And it's not that point, it's the camera adapter and the um, flattener. So the 55 millimeters is from this flange where the adapter 
and the flattener meet to the sensor uh, focal plane. So uh, it's because I never demate these things, so I, I, I treated it as one. So if I remove this and the adapter, then I'm left with my flattener and uh, it's that that has to be measured. This is the flattener and this is the filter I have, a light pollution filter I have. <clears throat> so uh, you want to measure, uh, this 55 millimeters again is from this flange of the flattener through the adapter to the sensor on the camera and uh, typically that's 55 millimeters. I believe Canon DSLR and Pentax DSLR it will be 55 millimeters. Uh, I think the Nikon has a, has a, has a, a uh, thinner adapter so that it meets that 55 millimeter measurement. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make that correction. Okay, so that's the four adjustments I've gone through that you need to make before you actually start out on your astrophotography. And uh, like I said, it's important to do this even with brand new equipment because typically brand new equipment has not been calibrated or adjusted uh, unless you bought maybe a Takahashi or something, something very expensive. And that's it. So I'll show you, as you can see, I had a lot of pieces and parts around here. And uh, I'll put in a little bit of video with, uh, that showed you the, my mount partly taken apart. And uh, maybe in my next video, we'll see how it all turned out. Okay, that's it. Thank you.